Welcome back to another video in our series, Burning with Intelligence. In a previous video, I did cover the DTI in a little bit of detail, but today I'm gonna to go a lot more in depth, specifically on that DTI rule system. So let's take a look at the DTI itself. Here I have my DTI rules configuration page. I have 10 rules here. I can create up to 100 of these. Let's have a quick look at some of the more basic rules that I have configured today. If I tap on number one, at the top there, you can see on MM fault occurred, I'm gonna send an email to myself. Now looking at this screen, there are 12 different settings that you can potentially configure. Some are in blue, which means they have been changed from default. Some are black, which means they are editable. Some are selected, but grayed out, like your input selection in this case is a fault. That's because there's only one input selection, so we don't even give you that choice. And then down at the bottom here, we have two unused settings, number 11 and 12. That's because they're not relevant to this particular rule that we've set up. If I exit there and go into Number nine, at the top, on MMID1 fault occurred, I'm going to disable burner number one. You can see there are various different options that we've set up here. These can differ rule by rule. So of course you can take inputs from your MMs, EGAs, the DTI itself, of course your input output modules as well, but now we can take inputs from various gas and air pressure sensors. For example, let's say we've got a gas sensor in our main gas line, we can set thresholds based on that. Same for an air pressure sensor in your boiler room ventilation. Maybe there's multiple points on your gas train that you also want to monitor. You could monitor the level of an oil tank, we could take an input from a level sensing device in your DA tank and we can generate various points of control such as bringing on feed water pumps for your DA tank, we can send emails, generate alarms, even disable burners or change firing rates if we want to. So let's have a look on the DTI at some more of those intricate details of those rules. Okay, so for my gas pressure sensor, which is hooked up in my main gas line, I have three different rules set up. Different outputs, but the same input. So I've set up a threshold when my reading from my main gas line pressure sensor drops below 1.8 PSI, I'm gonna do three different things, three outputs. First one is to send an email to emergency at autoflame.com. Second one is to select the individual firing rate for MMID1, meaning the DTI is now defining what that firing rate is. And then my third output is just defining that firing rate. So if I tap on that, I can see I'm defining that as 25%. In my case, low flame hold. Rule number five is at 4 p.m. analog input two level, which in my case is from an oil tank. I'm gonna send that level information to the plant manager at autoflame.com. Rule six and seven, again, have the same input. So they are technically linked. These refer to analog input one, which is from a level sensing device in my DA tank fed into my analog input board. When that reaches less than 20 inches, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna send an email to two recipients, in this case, myself and the plant manager. I'm also gonna energize digital output one. So this could energize a relay to bring on a feed water pump for that DA tank. Now, number eight is for my oil tank again. So this is my analog input two. Maybe I've got a level sensing device in there, some kind of device that can give me an analog input. So when that reaches less than 35%, I'm again gonna send an email to the plant manager. Now finally, we've got number nine and 10. These again have the same input, so they are linked. When my EGA number one goes into fault, two things are gonna happen at the same time. Burner number one, is gonna be disabled. And I'm also gonna generate a non-recycling warning. Now the way I've set up the warnings in my DTI, 
it's also going to energize that alarm relay on the back so i can energize an alarm sounder from that if i wanted to so let's have a look more in depth actually how to configure these specific rules so now i'm in a specific rule let's have a read of what my rule is described as so when analog input one which is my da tank reaches a level less than 20 inches but resetting at more than 25 i'm going to energize digital output one so what does all this mean how do we actually set it up as i said before we have 12 various settings that we can potentially configure if we start in a methodical sense right at the top setting number one this is where we can either disable the rule if we want to create it but not actually activate it at the moment we can of course have it enabled and we can delete it if we want to start fresh number two is now our input type so you can see everything we do is just from a drop down list input type either your mm ega io module pressure sensor or the dti itself in our case it's an io module setting number three is which io module is it number one number two all the way up to number 10. i've got this set as input module number one next is which input on that board is it one of our 16 digital inputs or one of our six analog inputs well i've got a level sensing device in my da tank hooked up to analog input one so that is what i've selected next setting number five is our output type exactly the same as what we've just done on the input so are we outputting onto an io module are we sending an email? Are we generating a DTI fault? Or is there going to be some kind of MM control, your burner control? In our case, it's an IO module. Number six, which IO module are we looking at? In our case, we're going to use that same IO module number one. Number seven is our output selection. Is it one of our eight digital outputs? Those volt free contacts or is it one of our six analog outputs well in my case digital output one feeds a relay for my feed water to my da tank next number eight is our rule function now this is really how you define what happens what triggers this particular rule so we start at the top on if we set this as on we're going to perform an action when a digital input changes or an event occurs. So for example, if we see a particular input on the digital side, or do we get an error on one of our MMs, EGA, DTI, then we can generate this rule based on that. Copy and invert are both relevant to your IO module. So copy, we're going to copy a digital input or event state to a digital output for example we see a digital input come in we're going to send out a digital output if we lose an input we're going to stop the output we're just copying that state of course invert is the opposite so we see an input we're going to stop that output or we lose an input we're going to generate an output at performs an action at a programmed time of day so for example, that oil tank, we can give that level, uh, send an email to the plant manager at 4 p.m. every single day. We can do that from this function. And finally, what we want is the threshold. So we're gonna perform an action when an analog input level passes a configurable threshold value. This is what we want because once we get to a certain point, certain level from that level sensing device, we want to generate the rest of this rule. So that was setting number eight. We go to number nine. This is our trigger condition. So does the level have to be less than a particular value which we're going to set or more than? In our case, we're doing a lower level, so we'll keep it as less than. Next, number 10, what value are we going to trigger this rule at? So I said, we're going to have this as 20 inches. Now, because there is a decimal place, we just need to type in 200. Make sure you press 
the return key and it will populate up the top left. Next we have our re-trigger threshold. Now what this really protects you against is multiple triggers of that particular rule. So we had it set at 20 inches. We don't want to have to go to 20.1 and then back down to 20 and keep triggering this rule. So we could set this at say 250, which equates to 25 inches. So therefore we have to rise above 25 inches and then back down to 20 before we trigger this rule again. It's to stop nuisance triggering. And then finally, we have our output value. So this is whether we are stopping an output on our digital side, or are we sending a digital output? Well, I want to energize that pump, so I want to send out a digital output. So now we go back to the top, read that rule once again, when analog input one is less than 20 inches, but resetting at more than 25, we're going to energize digital output one. Okay, so it really is that simple setting up these various rules. So I hope you all found that really informative going through that DTI rule system in a lot more detail. So make sure you tune in next time for more intelligent answers to burning questions.